Hi, thank you for taking our embroidery class. So first off, for those of us who's Zooming, what is embroidery? Embroidery is basically stitching on fabric in a decorative manner. I'm sure there's a more dictionary appropriate word for that, but I don't have that today. So what can you do with embroidery? You can make lace. You can make patches. You can decorate t-shirts. But in order to do all this stuff at the Baudry, you will need to use the Fox Creative Vision. So you're like, that doesn't really, that just looks like a normal sewing machine, Sarah. And you are right, it is also a sewing machine. But because we have several other sewing machines that I just pointed off camera that you're not going to look at, we are going to use this just for embroidery. So let's go and start the transformation. What we're going to do is I'm going to reach in here and just pull and this part comes out. So this part is the inside the sewing machine bit. So we have all our sewing feet in here, any bobbins, doesn't actually look like we have bobbins in here right now. But this is the short baby version. We're going to need to go to the Fox case. Dun, dun, dun. The Fox case. When you open this up, you know how to use the zipper. Inside, inside we have what is called the sewing arm. So the sewing arm is what our embroidery machine actually uses to move your hoop back and forth. Underneath the sewing arm are our hoops. So right now we have three hoops, a big hoop, a medium hoop, and a small hoop, which is not in here right now. And these hoops are used in various fabrics and such when using the Fox Creative Vision. One thing to keep in mind, these hoops are super, super expensive. In addition to very expensive sewing machines, the hoops are also super expensive, and the machine will only work with specific hoops. If you break the hoop, this is Cassie, one of the craft ACs, you will but pay for we will ask money. you to pay for it. Yes. Please don't break our hoops. Please be kind to our hoops. All right. Now we have our embroidery arm. So first off, can you see right in here, there's this little handle, and when I squeeze it, that little doohickey moves back and forth. That is how the embroidery unit attaches to the machine. So what you're going to do is you're going to just slide, oops, and just slide it in until you hear that nice click. So right now, the sewing machine arm is in what is called the parking position. Um, parking position means that you can easily pull it out and put it back in the pocket. So, we've started. We've got our lovely sewing machine arm. Let's take a look at the software. First, when you put the sewing machine arm on, you are going to want to use this foot. This is the embroidery foot. Now, it's plastic. Looks really weird, doesn't look like your normal foot. And the way you put it on is you make sure this little leg is facing in front of the sewing machine leg and you just push it up. Take it down, just pull down, just a little bit of pressure. Pretty easy. Next, let's look at the software. So, right now, we see that this is set in sewing machine mode. And you can tell that this is set in sewing machine mode because it is, has the sewing foot selected. That's my drink. <laughs> it has the sewing foot selected. If you want to set it for embroidery, you want the embroidery hoop to be selected. So you just long touch on the embroidery hoop. And immediately what you're going to see is this is going to pop up. Calibrate embroidery unit, remove hoop, clear embroidery arm for calibration. 
So calibrate embroidery, remove hoop. The hoop will be set in your arm, but when you are first initializing the machine, you do not have the hoop attached. Snap on the embroidery presses it. Yes, we say it has been done. And then it lives. Now your embroidery machine is ready to go. So we have right here our small hoop, 120 by 120. And what you want to do is you want to support the arm and slowly just slide it in until you hear a click. To release it, you still support that arm and you press down on this lever here and gently pull it out. All right, again. Support the arm, gently just slide it right in. The machine knows what hoop it fit. So now let's go over to our software. And right here, this symbol right here is the arm, but we're going to select the hoop because we are using the 120 by 120 square hoop. So once we select that, our background changes to show what is available to select. So looking at this hoop, it looks like it's actually a rectangle and not a square. So it's only 120 by 120 that can be embroidered on, and then there is a little bit of extra border space. All the space that you have available here is what you will put your pattern, use your pattern. So, let's get the hoop ready. So, one very important thing when dealing with embroidery is you want stabilizer on the back. So stabilizer is really important. For example, here we have some denim and we've got this light fusible stabilizer on the back. Stabilizer basically is there because your needles are poking many, many holes in your fabric. And fabric, much like humans, if, it ha if they have too many holes poked into them, fall apart. So that stabilizer is to give it some stability and backing. And there are a lot of different stabilizers that you can use. For example, this, which I'm not sure what the texture looks like on there, but this is stabilizer that will melt away in warm weather. You would use this when making lace. We also have cutaway stabilizer, which is a little bit firmer. We have tearaway stabilizer, which is a lot thicker and it's almost like a paper. And then we have other different stabilizers, um, such as midweight and season. Basically, different fabrics require different stabilizers. Use the internet <laughs> if you are not sure about which stabilizer is right for your project. I will usually say that I usually go if, if I don't know what stabilizer to use and I don't have the internet handy, I will go towards the heavier stabilizer because actually, this for example shirt right here. Um, I used a lightweight stabilizer and as I was embroidering the flowers on the outside, it all started tearing the fabric because the fabric wasn't supported enough. So now I have a whole bunch of holes in the center of my shirt. Not what you want. Cock holes. All right. So Hoop stabilizer. So now we're going to take this to the table. And so our hoop is broken out into our outer part and our inner part. And we have our fabric and our stabilizer right here. Now, normally you would want to iron your fabric. However, I like to live on the wild side. So today we will not be ironing the fabric. You can take your fabric and if you have stabilizer that adheres to it by an iron, you can use your iron now to attach this. You can also use spray on quilting, quilting um, glue, anything to keep it all nice together. Again, I'm living on the wild side today. Um, do as I say, not as I do. So we take our little fabric sandwich and we put it inside the hoop. Now notice right here, there's a little downwards arrow. This little downwards arrow 
will always match right here with this little upward arrow in the group. So, we put our hoop together. So I'm putting this upper, this top hoop inside the inner hoop. And then I'm just going to gently pull on the fabric. Make sure that it is tight and tall. And I see if I had ironed this, this would look much nicer. Ironing is your friend's folks, unless you're me, and then it's your enemy. So right here. You'll notice that right here we have a little crack, and that is for releasing your project when it's done. You'll use this right here to tighten up your hoop until you can still turn it, but there is resistance against your fingers when you're trying to turn it gently. I'm going to just keep on pulling this, and you want this to be like a drum, nice and taut. Ooh, that should be pulled a little bit. Basically, don't cut corners, don't skimp. This will make you want your nice, your nice flat canvas because next will come the puncturing bit. And there you go. All right, so now we have our hoop and our thread. We have our hoop nice and happy. We're going to again support that arm and gently slide this in until we hear that click. Music's my ear. Next. Let's go through the machine itself. So, right here we have green thread, which I don't think we need. Sorry, Cassie, can you pop? So, bobbins. You will find all your bobbins in here. One thing about the Foss bobbins, especially made for the embroidery machine, is that instead of a circle hole, there is a rectangle hole on the top of these. And, oh, Darn it, we don't have any empty ones. But they've got like this little plastic curl in them, almost like a screw. And this is actually used by the machine to tell you when you're running low on embroidery thread. So it will stop you before you run out of bobbin thread, which, lifesaver! All right, so let's put our thread together. I'm going to pull this up. Your thread goes up here. Doesn't matter which way you do this. So, first, you want to hold this straight. You want to hold this nice and straight and gently pull it under that until it just runs smoothly through here. Now, right up here we do have instructions if we are threading the bobbin. You want to pull the thread over this little hook and then through these two. And then pause. Go. So now here is an empty bobbin. What we're going to do is we are going to take this thread and put it through this square hole from the inside out if it will go. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to thread it through here and then put it right on this little spindle here. Now, unlike in most older sewing machines, you just pull this out to make the bobbin spin. Instead, you're just going to tap this from uh, angled to straight. And in the screen, you will see that a little speed dial here. So when you're ready, I'm going to put this at a medium speed because that's what I do. You can just hit play. And then I'll hit stop because this needs to get cut. That's not good. So you're just going to want to trim this off. And you can continue to fill it up 
and it will automatically stop once the thread get the bobbin gets filled and it will automatically move this over. I'm not going to fill this all the way because we don't have a good spot for it. But right around here, there's a little razor. So you can just cut it. Can you point to that with that? Yep, here's where the razor is. Be okay. careful. Ouchie. So now we've spun our bobbin. Let's put our bobbin in. So right here, and now remove the bobbin plate. Take out the green bobbin that's already in there. Put that down here. What you want to do is have your bobbin shaped like a lowercase p, which means that the thread is coming down on the left side. Wind this around so it catches under this hook right here. And then you're going to pull it up so it goes under this hook right here. And then gently pull it underneath here. Now don't pull too hard to get because there is yet another hidden razor under here. What you want to do first is slide the bobbin plate back on and then just pull this and now your bobbin is thread. Woohoo! All right, let's go back to our thread. Now we're going to thread our needle. Again, keep this nice and straight and pull it through here. This goes underneath that hook. And then we go down, around, up, and right here, there is this little metal hook. You want to make sure to go around that. And now we get to the magic, the automatic needle threader. This may take some practice. What you're going to want to do is right here, you're going to pull this all the way down. And you'll take this and gently go under this first hook. And then right here, there are two hooks. You're going to go right in between them and gently hold it to the back. Now, hold your thread in your hand. Make sure you keep it loose, because what's going to happen is when you release this lever here, it's going to pull the thread through the back of the needle. And so you want this tail to be able to move so that it gets pulled. So when I release it, notice there's a loop in the back. And I can just pull that and my needle is threaded. Let's see that again. <laughs> pull underneath, hook this underneath, go through here, hold it very gently in the back. Now let it go. We've got our loop here and pull that loop right through. Now for our third hidden razor, we've got a little circle up here that you can just pull this around and cut that and we're done. All right, our needle is threaded. Our bobbin is put in there. Why is this not going in? I'm just going to press this up to make my foot go up. And I'm going to support this and click. All right, let's look at the software. So we've already turned on our embroidery machine, and we've made sure we have selected the hoop and we've selected the right hoop size here. Let's go down and take a look at these other buttons. So this is the arm button. This right here adds grid marks to whatever you're doing, to your fabric. This is your fabric. You can change the color of your fabric. We're going with a weird Muslim peachy thing. Let's change that so it matches. In addition, you can make it so that this is either shows a texture or doesn't have a texture. This right here is the parking position. Remember how I mentioned the parking position earlier? You don't want to touch this right now because it's going to make you take off your hoop and move this all the way back. So here's our hoops. We've got a whole bunch of different hoops. We don't own all these hoops, though I wish we did. Right here, this is the thread color. So if you have an embroidery pattern with multiple colors of thread, you can see the thread pattern and how, how it will basically layer right here. So let's add our pattern. So I'm going to go down here. 
here's our menu. Actually, let me also tell you, this is my favorite thing ever. If I forget how something works, you just hit the question mark and you tap it and it tells you what everything does. Love it. Do you ever worry about needing the manual? Nope, that's not the manual. What's the manual? If you need the manual, we do have the help center right here. And you can look up everything. Very, very helpful. Long press stuff to close out of it. So we're, we are going to go right here to the menu. Now this machine has a whole bunch of pre-done patterns on it. Feel free to play around. But today, we're going to pull something from this USB drive. Now this is a very special machine. It cannot take USB drives over a gigabyte. And I ask of you, where is the, who has a flash drive that's less than a gigabyte? We do, we have a whole bunch in the FOSS container and you can use that and you can transfer stuff over there so you can use your patterns. I'm gonna select this flash drive and select it again. And now I have all these different, very fun patterns. I'm going to choose this one because I got this one specifically for this. As you can see, it is a black belt in hooping. <laughs> so now that we have our pattern here, we can see we can delete this, make a copy. Um, we can flip it if we wanted it to be reversed or upside down. Why is it that would want words like that? But you can have a glass. Right here, this is for moving. This is for rotating. No, you gotta select that. This is for rotating. You can resize patterns, but I would recommend against it um, because of the way the patterns are designed. This is panning, go back and forth. Basically, if you resize a pattern to be too big or too small, sometimes there will be gaps or clumps in your thread because you have made something super big or super small. I'm going to delete this because I've had my fun. I do not want to do that. So right here, I want to put this right in the center, so I'm just going to hit this center button. Let me move this so you can see how that works. Okay, hey, put this right in the center. I'm just going to put this right in the center. Now, right here, this is an option to make your pattern bigger. So you can make something bigger or smaller. It really depends. I think 30% is like the biggest you want to go in either direction. Um, there is this button right here, which will fill in more stitches if you're making it bigger or remove stitches if it's smaller, but it's within the machine, so it's not a simple. Machines are magic. I do not understand how it adds or removes the stitches, but it does things. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work. So a lot of times I just do a whole bunch of tests. Next, right here, if you have like a tiny little pattern, you can say, hey, I want a circle. I want to make this in a circle pattern. And you have all your little different displays in a circle. And you can make it so that it is some kind of moving. Well, this is actually going to just change the size of the circle, not the size of your display. But you can move stuff around. If you have multiples, you could like have a little ring of zombies or something. Um, zombies is a nice thing to do with your pet. Nope. There are those. There's not one. Not the zombie assembly. All right. So we got that. Everything is placed to perfection. You can play around. I encourage you to play around. And now we are going to go to the embroidery section. So right now we are at this little embroidery hoop. Oop. Nope, cancel. Embroidery hoop. And now we select this embroidery hoop with a butterfly in it, which stands for the pattern. 
And now we suddenly see there's a lot more here. Right here, we see that this embroidery pattern, even though it looks um, like a single pattern, it's got one, two, three, four, five different, five different layers to it. And if we look at each layer, we'll see that this total, the total pattern is 500, 5,352. But this specific layer is 118 stitches, and so it'll take about a minute. And as we look through here, we see that there's other, that there's guesstimates right here. This right here is the thread tension. What's really nice is right here I'm using Madera Rayon 40, which is recommended by my pattern. And if I select this, we can see that, well, it says Ma Ra 40, but that stands for Madera Rayon 40. So this is our, the tension is already set based on the thread that is in the pattern. All right, we've got our arm. So again, we can change the color if we want to. I don't want to. We can add pattern or back. So right here, this is really nice. So this will change all of your all of your different colors to one grayscale. So that means that it will not stop and ask you to um, to change your thread if you do that. If you have multiple colors of thread that are layered on top of each other, this is kind of boring because this is all the same one. This will lump your threads together. So this will basically say, if you have pink, blue, pink, this will put all your pinks at the top and then blue, if you just want to go. Right here, this shows you what your pattern will look like. Beautiful. Tap to get rid of it. Here, 3D, this basically changes the way the pattern looks. So before we saw the path of how the needle would travel, this one, as you can see, does not do it, but it should, when we're in 3D mode, show basically what the stitch itself looks like instead of the path that it's supposed to. Right here is the speed. So you can set your speed to super fast or super slow. I usually start at the middle and then if my thread keeps on breaking, I'll like put it back a little bit. Right here. So this is our fun part. So this is your hoop. So current position is where you are in your pattern. Right here is that park position, which will move this all the way to the end. But we also have what's called bobbin position, which it'll just move. So if you need to replace your bobbin, you can just do it right here. Cut position is up here. It will cut all your threads for you. And center position is the exact center of your hoop. So, shall we begin? Sure. All right. So, let's say I'm happy with everything. I'm just going to press this button to go down. And I'm going to hit play. Hold on one second. Do that again. Just press your button and then just press play. Ooh. As you can see, it has started. Right here, you can track. Oops. It looks like I need to check my needle thread. that up. So what I really like about this machine is that when something bad happens, it will tell you. You don't have to find out later or have your hoop go flying above the Audrey against the table because you just walk away from it. Now, because the thread snaps, the needle is technically right here and we're missing a couple of stitches. So I'm going to say, yeah, we checked the needle thread. And now we're going to go back. And so we're back to where the needle was. And now we can hit play.
I'm actually going to slow this down. But, notice how this makes my time go up. So, it really depends on how you want to do this. really overexcited. <laughs> so that's why it's better to go with slower. Because sometimes it will not. Now notice that there was a little jump right here. I will cut that later. If it makes weird noise, it probably means something is up. Good ramen. go I'm gonna cancel what we have now. I'm gonna go back to here. Long press on this. Yep, this will cancel. I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna just move this out of the way. Alright, let's see how that works. And I just moved that up because we have this disgusting ramen down here. We don't want that. So, what we're going to do instead is try again. The first you can't succeed, try, try again. Bird chest. 
Little Bird Wing. And we are heading towards the end. And it's done. You can see this is green. You can cut your thread. Because it was green, it's already cut it for us. Now we push down on this and pull this off, and look, we've got our lovely little raisin. Never more, never more. And we've got a whole bunch of failures here, but you want to know what? That's how you learn, friends. All right, so now that we're done, I'm going to do is I have to say thank you. We're going to go back here. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our farm and go to parking. Once we have parking, we can pull this right off and put it back in the case. And they want to pull the lever on the end to do that, to take it off, correct? Yes. Okay. Don't just yank the arm. See, the hoops go underneath here, but we still are unhooping our stuff over there, so. Nice here. Don't forget to put the extension cord in there as well, because we keep the extension cord for the machine with the bag. So we just don't have people using this for random sewing. All right. So, last bit. We have our hoop. To release it, we're just going to pull this. This is going to come right off. And now I can do whatever I want with this. The end. When you finish watching the video, would you please be so kind as to reach out to Sarah, Sylvia, or Cassie to schedule an in-person um, check off check off that way you can show us that you understood the steps in the video as well as to answer any questions that you may have if there are any questions beforehand after watching the video just go to the craft channel on slack and post those questions thank you very much